Great. Well, first of all, thank you very much to the organizer to allow me to speak about Clay Health here. Um, so I'm going to present you um, an evaluation challenge that we've been running since 2013 uh, within the Clay uh, Conference. So that's what I'm hoping I'll be able to talk about, but it might be too long, we'll see. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce you to the challenge itself. Uh, so what are the tasks we, we have been organizing, the data sets, did we get some participants, and the impact of our tasks and our papers. Uh, and then I will talk about the consumer health search task, which is an information retrieval task that has been running since the beginning. So, to give you the context, uh, it all started in 2013 when um, Hannah Suominen wanted to organize a shared task with some um, annotated data. And what they had was what you can see in the box on the top left, uh, which is some text from discharge summaries that are given to patients. <coughs> And then she asked us what we could do with that as information retrieval people. Um, so we told her that, um, th so the whole task we decided, the whole lab we decided would be first to identify entities in a discharge summary. And then given the entities in the discharge summary, we will try to find some relevant information online to help the patient understand what the summary was. Uh, the, the reason why we're interested in that is that the patients are more and more committed uh, into understanding their own health condition. Uh, they're conducting more and more searches on the web. And if you've ever Googled your symptoms, probably um, you have been fearing that you had a very, heart, very uh, severe disease. Um, so. This, the, the, the fact that people can search online for any kind of information has a big impact on health. It changes the relationship uh, they have with their physicians. And also it can create, um, it ha can have very uh, severe consequences. So what we're trying to do is to help patients understand health data. Um, and also understand health professionals um, help patients find data. So that's what clay health tasks um, look like since the beginning. So we started in 2013 with the first column and we had um, named entity recognition task in clinical reports and also acronym normalization tasks. And the patient-centered information retrieval or consumer health search tasks. So we started with three tasks. And then after that, people came in, left. Uh, we had new tasks every year, and uh, some of them have been running for several years in a row. Um, so we divided them into three categories, information extraction, information management, and information retrieval. Uh, so maybe the easiest one is the information retrieval because there's more or less the same tasks have been running for years. So consumer health search and cross-lingual information retrieval is searching on the web for information given an English or any other language query and English documents. So what, that's what you have at the bottom. and. Um, now we also have technologically assisted reviews in empirical medicine, which is a search task as well, but where you're trying to find all the relevant information if possible. So um, the, goal has, are, the goals are a bit different. In the information management section, so that's the, the part in the middle, we had a task on e-health data visualization. Oh, amazing. Thank you. Yay. And then we also had a nurse's hand, handover report management task that ran for two years. Now, the, the, the biggest and uh, the task that would take longer to describe is the one in 
information extraction. I think the reason why we had so many different tasks is that it takes much longer to get a data set and it takes so much energy once you've done it once or twice, then you stop and then you do something else. So we've, we've had different teams. Uh, we started with English clinical reports. So the first two years, and then we had uh, some French teams coming in, organizing name identity recognition and also ICD coding from um, death reports and the name identity recognition on biomedical articles. I think Aurélie will talk about uh, these data sets um, later on today. And we also had, since 2017, some multilingual information extraction from health reports in various languages. Now the data sets. So for all these tasks, this is the data we had. Uh, so these are the information extraction tasks. So the first uh, part I showed you in the previous slides. So for the named entity recognition, the first tasks in English, we had data sets from MIMIC database. So these were manually annotated medical reports uh, with, uh, as annotations, the disorders and the abbreviations. And in 2000, since 2015, we had French corpus of biomedical articles with, name, with named entities annotated. And, for, and after that, in 2016 and 18, we had some death certificates in several languages with the ICD codes that had to be recognized as the task. And in 2019, we still have ICD coding, but not on death certificates, but on non-technical summaries of animal experiments in German. So we still have some non-English documents. For the information management tasks and, and their data sets, in 2014, uh, for the visual interactive search and exploration of e-health data, the idea was to help people um, to design systems that will help people visualize all the data they had. So the data was everything we had in the lab, which was um, health reports with their annotations, queries, web documents, and the relevant judgments, which, which is the link between the query and the relevant documents. <coughs> then in 2015 and 16, uh, for the handover information extraction, uh, we had some patient cases that uh, were already transcripted and the task was to correct what had been extracted uh, by the tools. So we had 200 patient cases for that task. For the information retrieval, and I'll give you details, uh, I'll go back to this task later on. Uh, since 2013, for the consumer health search task, we the goal is to find relevant documents for given patient queries in various languages. Uh, so the data sets are composed of web documents that are extracted from the web. It changes, uh, we, we, we change data set, but it's always a whole uh, set of, docu of web documents. Um, we also have the topics or the queries. Topics are enriched queries. So the topics um, are usually built from various sources and I'll describe how we build them through the years, and also the relevance judgment, which is the matching between the queries and the documents. For the cross-lingual information retrieval task, it's basically the same as um, the first one, but the queries are in a different language than the documents. So it involves a, a step of translation before the search. Um, and the only additional data is the tro topics that are translated, manually translated in different languages. And finally, for the technological assisted reviews, the, the purpose of this task is to provide the set of documents that would be useful to conduct a literature review. Um, so what they've been using is documents from PubMed and 
um, some systematic review topics from the Cochrane Library. And what they're using as the gold standard is all the documents that have been included in the actual uh, review on Cochrane. Now the participation we had over the years. Um, so in Clay Conference, people can register their interest in the task and then they can actually participate. So the green part is the expression of interest, which makes us very happy every year. And then the blue, the blue bar is the people that actually submit runs. Um, so in the, green, in the green part, we have some people that just get the data set and then don't submit anything. And because we release everything publicly after the task, then they just get the data anyway. Um, and also a lot of people that just click on all the labs for no reason. And so that just boosts the numbers. So we tend not to pay any attention to the green bar because um, we know it's going to be uh, much lower in the end. So that's a task-based participation uh, by task. So usually task one is information extraction, task two is uh, information management and task three. So task two is information management and since 2016 it's um, the um, empirical medicine task, so the, the literature review task. Uh, well, the, the whole point of this uh, diagram is just, so on top you have the expression of interest, again, we're not uh, paying that much attention to it, but for the, the tasks themselves, we have quite a constant number of participants, uh, except for um, the blue one where we had some tasks that were abandoned because we had zero or one participant over the years. Uh, task one, was very successful at the beginning because uh, they managed to get master two students registering to the task and submitting runs. So that was amazing, but it only lasted for once. And after that, they stopped. <clears throat> now, the impact of um, all these tasks and all the related publication, uh, we tried to conduct <coughs> some form of literature review of everything that happened around the publications that were submitted in the labs. So every year we have a lab overview paper and then one paper per task describing everything and then all the participants' paper. So we've uh, gathered all these publications in tables like this one and then counted the citations people got and also the number of authors and this kind of statistics. So we've done that on uh, 2000 to 2000, 2012 to 2017 labs, uh, gathered all the papers, and um, so we, we published that in uh, this journal, and now we're intending to conduct more uh, analysis like that. So in total, we had 184 clay health papers and 70, 741 authors, and it all generated uh, 1,300 citations, uh, so we were pretty happy about that. The, the publications are highly collaborative, while well, given the fact that uh, these are people participating in tasks, it's not really uh, surprising. We had four authors per paper on average, um, and so 47 out of the, the total number of papers were international collaborations and 78% uh, of the papers had been cited at, only, at least once um, and this is constantly evolving so that's uh, pretty promising. The number of citations per paper varied from 0 to 147. This is for the uh, the lab overviews that have to be cited each time people use our data sets, so obviously it's, it's boosting the numbers. Um, on, this, um, on this diagram you can see the, the citation numbers per uh, paper. These are only for the lab overviews and the task overviews. Um, so you can see 
well, obviously that the first year is more excited than the last one. Um, we just need to wait, hopefully, for this number to go higher. For the participants' paper, unfortunately, uh, there is a lack of visibility for them. Uh, on average, they cited um, three times, and well, I think that may, the 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 more, well the biggest problem with participants' paper is that um, in clay, at least the papers are not peer-reviewed. The participant papers, so. Um, they usually, from the community point of view, they have less value and that's a problem because then people publish somewhere else or never publish and um, that's something we've been thinking of but we don't really know what to do with it. So that's what we have done. If some of you lab organizers have conducted such studies and have ideas of things that we haven't looked at at the moment, I'd be very happy to know. Uh, and if I have enough time, I'll talk about the consumer health search task, which has been running since 2013. So that's the oldest task we have. And it's running since the beginning. So that's the one I can use to tell you the story of um, how, how we've been working on the task and how it evolved. So it started in 2013, where we had a discharge summary with annotations. So the discharge summary without annotation is given to the patient and then the patient le leaves the hospital and then does something with it or not. Uh, so we thought that it would be interesting to help them understand what's in the discharge summary through their web search. And it, afterwards, we uh, tackled another problem, which is people Googling their symptoms. So I'll describe you how we created the queries and um, okay and these are the existing medical information retrieval uh, evaluation task I haven't updated that slide um, so you some are missing uh, so in track there has uh, there has been a lot of health related um, information retrieval tasks, so track medical report records uh, in 2011 and 12. Then um, they, the more or less, the, I think the, the same people, or at least a subset of the people from track medical records, also organized the clinical decisions report. Uh, in clay, there's also the image clay um, with the sort track on medical data that has been running. Um, since a very long time as well. Well, none of these tasks are centered of the, on the patient. So that's why we wanted to build this, uh, this lab and these data sets. How are we evaluating information retrieval? We build an artificial data set representing a specific search and uh, we compare several systems on the same one. You, all familiar with that. The, the question we, we're trying to look at when we're evaluating information retrieval are, um, well, uh, some of them are listed here. We're trying to figure out whether the user found the relevant information, um, how many relevant documents did the user get back, what is a relevant document, how many unrelevant documents did she get back, uh, etc. One of the one of the innovations we brought in Clay Health in the information retrieval task is that um, we went beyond the topical relevance that is classically used in information retrieval. Um, in a lot of tasks, we consider a document relevant if it talks more or less about the query. And from the patient perspective, that's not enough. From anybody's perspective, that's not enough. But we wanted to go beyond that to improve to uh, also include some other aspects that are important to the users. Um, for example, some of the aspects we brought were the understandability, so the fact that the document was readable or not by the patient, and also the reliability. We're also thinking about other uh, dimensions, such as the appropriation of the disease, because depending on how far you are in a severe condition, um, you'll have a different knowledge and you'll also have, uh, you'd be comfortable to hear about uh, some information or not. But that's uh, a work in progress. We haven't added that yet. 
for the data sets. Um, so over the years we've been, uh, this is a complicated table, but what we want to look at here are uh, mostly the first uh, two parts. So what is the goal? We started by trying to help lay persons get a better understanding of their medical reports. And then we moved uh, we, we moved from the, the medical reports, um, and I'll explain you why, and we uh, looked at layperson checking their symptoms, uh, and that's what we've been doing since, since then. The topics, so at the beginning they were constructed using the discharge summaries, and after that we also tried several other methods. So instead of picking a disorder in a discharge summary, we gave images to people of skin or um, red eye or anything, and we asked them to write a query based on the image. Uh, we also used some uh, discussion forms. Um, and now, now we're looking at um, a search engine log. So we, we're going back to, proper, to real queries. Um, and the relevance judgment, we started with the topical relevance and now we include the readability and the trustworthiness of the documents. So that's what I just explained. From the, in 2013, we were randomly picking one disorder in the discharge summary. Um, and that gave very bad results because sometimes the disorder had nothing to do with the discharge summary. It was just the grandma's dis disease uh, or something unrelated. So in 2014, we picked the main, uh, the, the, the diagnosis in the discharge summary. So we manually picked which disorder we were selecting to create the query. And after that, we use the images to describe a medical problem. And finally, uh, we use the discussion forums. So these are our examples of our queries. Uh, these are the queries in 2013 and 14. We had some uh, nurses writing the queries. So they we managed to have a whole set of meta information around the, around the queries, which was really nice. They wrote a profile uh, describing, giving a summary of what was contained in the discharge summary. Then in 2015, 16, 17, we had much shorter query with just symptoms of description of the images. And in 2018 and 19, we have so we have queries translated for all the other tasks. Uh, but one thing that we're considering as well uh, since 2018 are all the variants for a single query. So we have all a whole set of different phrasing for a single information need that is listed. Um, I won't get into that. I will jump to the results. Um, so the outcome of all this, because otherwise you will never have lunch. Um, the, the, the first thing we discovered, um, and that's when we started the task, is that it was really hard to beat a good, a good baseline. And that was the case uh, in 2013. I don't think there's any participant that got results statistically significantly higher than our baseline. I mean, the organizer's baseline. So um, that was a bit upsetting for all the participants, even for us. Um, it got better afterwards. Or our baseline got lower, but people managed to beat it. Um, and the second thing I think that might be interesting for, for you, and um, that is very sad for us, is that NLP and information retrieval are not always good friends. Um, sadly, you would think that adding some language processing on the documents has to be helping information retrieval. It seems kind of obvious, but it doesn't work. Uh, so some things work. For instance, if you um, conduct some spell checking or acronym normalization on the queries, it does improve the results. Some form of query reformulation or expansion works. 
it can either be using UMLS or word embeddings. Note that using M UMLS, 50% um, chances it's going to give very bad results and 50% chances it's going to give good ones, depending on what you do with it. But if you just basically take related words in UMLS and use that as an expansion, you're going to have very bad results. Um, some people once tried to index all the documents using only the concepts, but that's the only time people tried to do that. That was in 2013. Um, and what doesn't work, uh, these are only two examples because I can't list all the things that didn't work. Um, but at the beginning when we were building the topics based on the discharge summaries, we thought that it would be a very good opportunity to use the, the discharge summary as a context, as contextual information to conduct better search. Didn't work at all. Um, I think because getting useful information out of the discharge summary as it um, uh, on its own is already a very challenging task, so in the end it only brought some noise to the information retrieval. Um, any form of smart use of UMLS uh, didn't work either. Um, and the lessons learned out of several years of organizing clay have we have quite a stable number of participants, but we have new people every year. Um, although people still use our data sets consistently, but they don't participate in the task. Um, people want ad hoc tasks, so they just want basic queries with relevant judgments on topic, and that's it. But the organizers want to do fun stuff, so there's a clash between everybody so we need to provide simple tasks to please people but to please the organizers we let them do whatever they want even if we have two participants it doesn't matter um, and we have an increasing use of our data sets although it's very hard to track uh, but not in the participation which is a bit sad but I think maybe the panel discussion um, can help us find solutions for that at the end of the day um, yeah, that's that's everything about Clay Health here. Uh, we have several websites, one for every year, but on this one you'll find all the information gathered. Um, we also have Google Groups, Twitter, everything, and next year we're going to Lugano. So if you want to join us, feel free to register for Clay 2019. There are a lot of other interesting tasks in clay and obviously um, everything i've been presenting is the work of a lot of amazing people I, these are very old pictures but um, that's not even the complete list of all the people that were participate uh, that were organizing clay health so uh, thanks to all of them and i'm done thank you very much <laughs>